Assalamu alaikum. I am Muqtada Khan. I am a professor at the University of Delaware. I teach Islamic studies there. And today I'm on Guidance TV, acting as a guest host. And believe it or not, I'm today talking to uh, Brother Amin, who is uh, a certified bona fide Islamic <laughs> ghostbuster. Believe it or not. Uh, sometimes when I'm out there speaking, people ask me, do you believe in jinns? This is a question that my wife has asked me, my kids ask me, my students ask me. And I have no experience of jinns to share with them. But I can't say I don't believe in them because there is a surah al-jinn. So I say, well, I have to believe in jinns because it's in the Quran. And I know only two jinns. And when people ask, who are these two jinns? I say hydrogen and nitrogen. So, so tell us, tell us, what, what do you mean by saying that you are an Islamic or Muslim exorcist? Well, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasul al kareem ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I'd like to start out by um, helping you a little bit understand about the world of the jinns. What they look like, you know, the Prophet ﷺ himself described them to us. What they uh, feel like the people who are sick with, the, with this... Uh, with these different entities can definitely explain it to you a lot better because, you know, as I say, experience is, is better than uh, the one who's experienced the problem is, can, can sometimes give you advice better than the doctor himself. But that being said, a lot of times some psychological problems can be actually actual gin-related problems. Some problems can be, uh, for example, schizophrenia. Uh, a lot of times, is actual sch uh, schizophrenia. Are you telling me that Donald Trump is possessed by a jinn? <laughs> I don't know what Donald Trump is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Just listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Donald Trump is doing. Uh, but uh, if there are a lot of uh, psychological problems that can be related to the jinn, but sometimes it's not. The only determining factor itself is the Quran. So one has to go through a proper evaluation. A lot of the things that you see, for example, in Hollywood, by the way, the scariest thing that I had ever seen was The Exorcist back in the, back, back in the uh, 90s and 80s. That, was, that movie horrified me the most. I was more afraid of jinns than I was of any person that I have ever met, anything. I was more afraid of jinns than I was of a car crash. Um, and subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in this, in this uh, situation to be able to help people with jinns. But getting back to your question, uh, what is a jinn related issue? A lot of times it's diagnosed as a psychological issue, but it's not. There are certain places in the psychological era, in the psychological field, that psychologists, for example, don't understand. There, are, for example, uh, uh, electric therapy. Right? They, they realize that there, there's a certain, there are a certain amount of psychologists who are studying electric, electrotherapy uh, when, it, when it comes to the brain, and they realize that there is some type of impact, but they don't understand what it is. Uh, there are certain uh, things that, there are certain triggers that a psychologist can uh, uh, say, certain things that a psychologist can say to certain people, uh, some people who are uh, uh, diagnosed with uh, certain types of schizophrenia, some people who are diagnosed with some uh, certain types of bipolarism, um, they, they, for example, they might tell them, let me speak to the angry person in you. And then the person's demeanor changes, the person's attitude changes, the person's feeling changes, and they become a totally different person. And sometimes after they come out of that personality, they don't remember what happened. So, so some patients are diagnosed with multiple personalities. So you, you would right. say they're under possession by multiple jinns? Possible. Oh, wow. The only determining factor, once again, is the Quran. Is the Quran. Is a proper exorcism uh, or proper evaluation with uh, uh, an exorcist. Can you actually diagnose and say, oh, I think this person is uh, suffering from possession by a jinn or is under the influence uh, of a jinn uh, or you just start treating them using the Quran and if they get better then you conclude that they were possessed by the jinn. No, you start with the in initial diagnosis. So how do you diagnose? You diagnose it with the Quran. So for example, if I gave you a live uh, 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 example right now, let's see, let's Why take your... I don't think there's anything wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's say you took your, uh, I'll give you a quick 
uh, introduction. So if you took your hand like this and put your fingers together, right? Yeah. Right now, I can tell that you probably drank a little bit of uh, coffee. You you have the, the jitters. Your hands are not uh, uh, are, are not shaking. Are they're shaking just a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, what I would do is I would recite certain verses of the Quran. Usually, it takes about 15, 20 minutes, and then uh, things start to happen. Um, for example, show me your hands. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. And then I would continue with verses of black magic, verses related to punishment, verses related to mercy, water, depending on the type of possession, right? So uh, then I would, after you're done, I would ask you, what did you feel? A lot of times your hands will start moving. Right? They, they would start moving. They would start opening up. The fingers was <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, exactly. The fingers would, fingers would start moving up and down. The eyes would start rolling back and forth. A uh, person might feel choked. You might feel pain in your stomach, in your lower back, your upper back. You might feel this massive migraine. You might feel pain in the, in the private area. You might, your legs might just stretch straight out. And you have absolutely no control over your body, and this has never happened to you. Why? Because you're now being exercised. And this is the initial evaluation. Once you've had this um, uh, evaluation, then I can say, okay, you need further visits. So These it's are like saying that you offer a little bit of the medicine, and, it, and the patient is responding. You conclude that the patient is is absolutely, okay. absolutely, and that's that. That's that's how we do it. Now, exorcisms are divided into three different categories. So right? you, you sometimes give khutbas also in the masjid, right? Absolutely. Maybe you should try it in, w in one of your khutbas, you know, just stand up there and recite some of these words and see how many of the people uh, in the masjid are confessed. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be way too dangerous. I'd get kicked out of the there masjid. There's a lot of people there who might just go, ah. <laughs> No, that'd be way too dangerous. I'd get kicked out of the masjid. And uh, it, it, it's not the proper time for it, right? Um, <laughs> but um, there it, it's divided into... On a serious note, sure. um, there are a lot of psychiatrists uh, in my family on my wife's side and... Mm -hmm. I have two cousins, one in Chicago, one in India. MashaAllah. But the cousin in India mm -hmm. has an interesting uh, experience, and he says that uh, he has patients. He, he mm -hmm. runs a clinic where patients are brought in sure. who, who are suffering from various psychological issues. And uh, he has a f now a, a, some kind of an associate, a colleague, who does exactly what you do. So mm -hmm. he comes and uh, he, he provides uh, some kind of therapy uh, to, to these people who possess and, and he, this guy studied in England and uh, and of course he's a practicing and believing Muslim but he feels that uh, even though all his scientific training tells him that there is no such thing as uh, <laughs> jinn possession but he feels that some of his patients benefit more from uh, from the treatment that absolutely the is providing than he's able to provide right but on the same note we still believe in psychological issues as Muslims mm -hmm. there are people who you know are suffering from Down syndrome there are people who are suffering from autism there are people who actually have schizophrenia and it's not related to but the genes talk about something like depression for example right um, that be something now, in my experience, every last person either has, um, now I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist or anything, but every last person who, um, who has uh, been suffering, uh, who has come to me and has been diagnosed with gene-related problems also have, has uh, symptoms of depression. Is there a relationship, a direct relationship? It's something that needs further study. Um, and uh, you know that th I have a, a few psychologists and psychiatrists who work hand in hand with me and are willing to do this type of study. Is there a direct relationship? Uh, it's difficult to be able to say from here, but every person who, who has come to me with these issues um, and has been diagnosed with them has also had symptoms um, my, the, with the uh, uh, small research and consultation that I've had with, with my psychologist and psychiatrist um, with depression. I've you? never seen a gen before. But you've seen the effect of the gen. I've seen the effect of the gens. Can you quickly, uh, we, we will be running out of time shortly, but can you quickly share with us a case perhaps where... 
Um, I'll give you one of the first cases that I had. Uh, after a while, because after a while, th that was when I had the excitement of becoming an exorcist. Oh my God, I'm a ghost. Uh, yeah, subhanAllah. You know, you never think that you would ever see anything like this, before, ever, ever in your life. Um, and especially with one of your friends or anything like that. So, um, with this one case, it was a case where a friend of mine was actually the, the exorcist and I was assisting. So this was uh, me back in my apprentice uh, days. Um, this Somali guy comes to a mosque where I was at and he was, he, he, for me initially, he was very weird. And now, you know, in hindsight, that person is a normal person. <laughs> but he was very weird and he, when we were making a salat he would he would bend all the way backwards kind of like what you saw on the exorcism of emily rose he would bend all the way backwards and i was like how in the world did he do that and his bones would crack and he would make real weird uh, real weird sounds with his mouth his knees would crack and when we were making a salat he would make salat and he would twitch and, and move and he wouldn't able he wasn't able to sit still at all now um, his brother says, don't mind me, he has a gin problem. I'm like, what? That's what, that's what it looks like? <laughs> really? And I was absolutely mesmerized by this sight, and I was horrified, I was scared, I didn't want to come close to him. <laughs> and he said, I'm waiting for Sheikh al-Jinn, the, 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 the Sheikh of the Jinn. And so uh, I said, man, who's the Sheikh of Jinn gonna, gonna be? And so this guy comes and uh, we go into this room in the mosque, and he starts reciting under his breath Ayat al Kursi. It's one of the verses in the Quran. Yeah. And he's blowing into a cup of water, and then he says to him, uh, Are you afraid? And he starts screaming, and he's hysterical. He said, What are you afraid of? He said, Stop burning me, stop doing that, stop doing that. And he falls down on the ground, and he's kicking, and he's 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 hitting the floor, and it's 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 a, and I'm sitting against the wall, like oh my God, what did I get myself into this time? I can never go through this. I'm going to be traumatized for the rest of my life, and I'm just I'm going through this uh, this uh, uh, I'm going through a break a breakdown, an emotional breakdown. And he tells us to grab the guy, hold the guy's feet down, um, hold him down, make sure he doesn't hurt anybody or anything like that. To make a long story short, um, th that case wasn't over on that day. But one of the highlights of that day was that uh, he said, how many jinns were inside? He said, 19. Eventually, um, oh, wow. 14 of them left. And he said, he where are the like rest? Bus. Yes. He like a bus for the jinns. Yeah. He <laughs> said, where, where were the, where, where the, where the, how, eventually he said, how many are left? He said, there's five. He said, where are the rest of them go? And the guy looks around. He's laying down on the floor. He looks around the room. And he says, they're around. <laughs> I'm like, around oh, where? Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> SubhanAllah. I wonder how many jinns are there in this room. And yeah, to only Allah right subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So, so I think it was a very interesting conversation. I mean, uh, I mean, it's still for, for somebody like me, it is still in, in the realm of fantasy. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I was told that, um, that I have a very strong personality which, uh, which cannot be influenced by jinn. Uh, and I thought well, that everyone could be, of, anyone could be influenced I by the jinn. I thought that was one way of telling me, explaining why I haven't seen any jinns. I wouldn't want to have a jinn right. experience. But it's an interesting aspect of the deen, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to talk about it. Alhamdulillah. So thank you very much. Barakallah. All the best for you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.